Welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends spin a wheel once a week, it chooses the horror movie, and they discuss it. Today we're talking about the 1999 film Deep Blue Sea, which was directed by Rennie Harlan. I'm your co-host, Alec. I'm Eric, and with us again is Justin Wellickson. Justin, welcome back to the show. <laughs> Justin. Welcome back to this show. You're the uh, you're the co-host now of Fresh Film Fridays. How's it feel? I know. You know, it's uh, I'm really moving up. <laughs> Yeah, you really are. No, you've, you've been helping us out a lot, Justin, with just like growing the platform and getting us a lot more followers and stuff. So thank you. You're our, what do we call you? The marketing choreographer? What are you? What's your title? CMO. CMO, that's right. <laughs> marketing <laughs> operator. Yeah. Sure. So this is a movie that we've all have quite an extensive past with. I mean, we've all seen this movie probably. I, I think I saw this in theaters, actually. What about you guys? Can't remember if I saw it in theaters. Easily have seen it. 10 times though since it's been out yeah i i did not see this in theaters i can say that but there's a time around the millennium i don't know if you kids know what the millennium is but <laughs> where i watch this movie a lot yeah i feel like this is one of those few movies that my mom was is like anaconda this uh lake Placid. there's a bunch of like r-rated movies like this that my mom was like ah it's just like jurassic park but a little more violent <laughs> yeah that's what i was it's jurassic park like meets jaws three <laughs> yeah actually kind of yeah I, yeah that's a good that's actually pretty good yeah <laughs> honestly like it's probably the second best shark movie i can think of actually probably the third i think it was jaws one jaws two then this well besides the jaws series right you're, you're saying this is the second best shark movie i don't know can you guys think of any other ones are we counting the megalodon the meg anything any shark <laughs> that movie, movies that was pretty bad so. actually it was pretty bad yeah I, I actually did watch a lot of shark week this year yeah eric you i mean technically like you have earned your phd due to how many times you've been watching shark week since a child like, oh i mean let's uh i mean <laughs> we can we National, can get into the mako and how it only grows to 15 feet maximum. animal planet like made a certificate and they were like hugo eric you're technically a doctor <laughs> did you know that the short fin mako shark is not only one of the fastest sharks but also the fastest fish it goes up to 80 <laughs> miles per hour eric wow. i'm serious i think on linkedin you can put like i have watched animal planet I've shark watched week yeah, I watched years. Air Jaws. I've watched like ten years of Air Jaws. The Jackass. <laughs> they had a Jackass special on um, Shark Week this this year. And uh, what was the other? They, oh, they had a nice like Robert Irwin one, like Steve Irwin's son. It was really cool. I like Shark Week. No, it's good. It, Big fan. It, Big fan. But uh, yeah, this movie is ridiculous. So with the Mako shark, what is it? Does he say forty five feet? Is that what he says? Dude, yeah, no, they don't grow that big. They don't grow that big. Let's it was like close. a school bus in the water. I was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> yeah. No one wants a 10 foot Mako shark. Like people want to see like big kahuna shark. Like, oh, I want that shark. Like apparently the shark in Jaws was 25 feet long. And then they ordered one that was 26 feet long just so they could say it was actually bigger than Jaws. But they're, it's not 45 feet. Yeah. It's 20, 26 feet is the biggest one that they ordered. So I don't know where the hell they pulled that line from. They don't grow that big. They don't grow that big. No. Makers. No. And also, like the Megalodon or whatever, at least they can say, like, okay, this is a Megalodon or like, oh, this is a super freak shark. These are just ones they found and like did brain shit to. It's like, why are they so big? Fun fact, too. I have a Megalodon tooth, a fossilized tooth. <laughs> it was found in New Jersey. It's uh... about the size. It's about the size of my palm. I'll have to share it on the Instagram. Oh, yeah. Um, it's really cool. It's like worth like 70 bucks or 60 bucks. They're found everywhere now. Uh, I, yeah. I'm surprised you never showed me that, actually. Yeah, I got to be honest, though. Like, I didn't need to see it again. <laughs> Dude, the best way I can describe it, like, when I text you guys, and I was like, all right, I'm starting Deep Blue Sea again. And I was so excited, like, because, like, this movie has so many. Like, we have been quoting this movie since easily ninth grade when we'd be yeah. like, this place is going to snap like toothpicks. And then when I like finished it, I was kind of upset. The best way I can describe it is like this is a an alcoholic beverage that used to be really good, but then you threw up because you had too much of it, and now you're like, I just can't, you can't even smell it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's 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 tough going back to those old '90s movies. Sometimes I enjoy it; it's a time capsule to me. But I was very happy I didn't have to pay. Uh, anything for it I, have, I use i mean do i share a netflix with my mother-in-law i mean that's for you to decide but i was very happy i didn't have to pay like 3.99 on amazon or anything for it very like my excitement was quite high yeah now this would be like one of those movies that you find in the walmart bin for like 25 cents 
Oh yeah, yeah the four dollar bin. It's like there's a five dollar, there's a four dollar bin. It's like oh, <laughs> okay, you know, we're you shitting. Can, on... You can just walk out with this one. We're shitting on it really hard, but I will say though, again, look at Megalodon and um, Sharknado, and I don't sure, know. Sure, sure. I think this okay. is probably of it's all. It's up there better. for shark movies. It's up there for. Sh- it's as good as a shark movie can be after Jaws. Yeah, really. yeah, I, I think that too, and. I don't know. It's kind of like it's an interesting concept. They're trying to cure Alzheimer's, you know, like, OK, it's like the Jurassic Park thing. It's like, oh, he wants to create a new like Disney World. He's, you know, he's right for the wrong reasons. And the same thing, it's like they're right for the wrong. They're trying to save the heal the world. Well, Jurassic Park was more for money, but this was like trying to solve Alzheimer's. So, yeah, all right, let me uh, let me pull up my my handy dandy notepad because I wrote down some cool stuff. All um, right, all right, do it. The first thing that I, I notice every time I watch this movie in the beginning when he's <laughs> swimming with the tiger shark oh who God. has the license plate in its mouth. Yeah, that's a Mako. And that's the Mako, right? I think it's a tiger. Yeah, shark. Yeah, I think it's a tiger. No, that's a. Ma- Oh, I thought it was one of the sharks that escaped. Okay, it has stripes on it. Um, You know when he's standing and like from the knee down, it's still in the water on the ladder. Every time he's talking to the doctor, I just picture like the tiger shark grabbing his calf and being just like ripping him into the water. Yeah, (laughs) I just want to. I just like get out of the water. Even before that, that opening scene with the party, like that party kind of i mean the boat was cool but it looked like it's it was like a boom box that ran on d batteries and like four bud heavies it act oh. like it looked it was like eh, like we're having a party man and he's like just spills his beer yeah like, no those rich kids were like this is my dad's boat man <laughs> <laughs> oh for sure but how did thomas jane stop them dude because he timing. was he Perfect was hunting timing. the shark he knew it he or or those kids were bait <laughs> Well, no, I think they said they're like, we don't know how it got out sort of thing. Where they're like, what the fuck? But anyways. Yeah, dude. So, Thomas Jane was just in the middle of the ocean. Like, maybe there's a shark here. Yeah, ridiculous. But anyway, so sorry. Okay, so when he's swimming with the shark again, he's swimming with these sharks and he's just kind of like, you're my baby. Like, pets it or whatever. It's like the <laughs> Jurassic World with Chris Pratt. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then uh, when he's having a talk with, Samuel Jackson and um for some reason like out of the dozen times I've seen this I've I never noticed that he said he was like on parole when he went to prison oh yeah and Samuel Jackson was like you know who I am right and he's like he's like I'm just a con man he's like the only job I could get is swimming with sharks I'm like <laughs> really that's the only job you could get? Well, th- that's what makes me think of the ending a lot you know the ending is just Carter and LL Cool J alive at the end right yeah so yeah. we're talking the chef is alive at the end and like the people are coming to rescue and the only other person left alive is the guy who's been arrested <laughs> and who's supposed to handle sharks so this shit doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, so but they were like, they were altered, dude. No, well, no, no well, yeah, but no one knows that really, like, except for them. And people are gonna come there, like, what happened? It's like, I don't know, it was an explosion. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. It's like, did the sharks get out? It's like, I, I have no idea. Like, the, you, you can't say, like, all these sharks, they ate everyone. It's like, weren't you the guy that. The next these, shift is going to be like, you're, oh, you're so going back to jail. Yeah. Well, no, he, they hire this guy to, like, handle the sharks. And he's like, oh, I didn't do a good job. Like, no, but you're clearly. right, though, Eric, because they're going to be like, uh, what's your criminal record again? It's like, <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, boom, they are, like, so pinned. Everyone's like, dead uh, except for you. And LL Cool J, like, what do you do as a profession? Oh, you're the chef? Oh. Uh, okay all right let's see what we can do right. here. <laughs> yeah okay, they're, right they're gonna be like what happened to everyone it's like the sharks got him like okay con man yeah <laughs> all right yeah i never thought about um, <laughs> totally forgot tony soprano's sisters in this oh yeah she was the Dude, I just every time I hear a voice when when the uh, radio tower blew up, I was like, thank God she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, I know. I actually completely forgot that was her, too. Yeah. Scars, 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 yeah, Scars, Guard's dad is in it, too. Those Scars, Guard's brothers. His... Scars, Guard's brother. Scars, Guard? So, you know, I guess his arm bit off. Bill Skarsgård from It. Yeah, yeah that's sorry. his dad. And he's also in like The Glass House. He's in Good Will Hunting. He's in so many movies. Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, he's in a ton of movies, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but- I-, I did find it funny when, when uh, I always, I just refer to him as the main guy from The Punisher, The Punisher guy. Yeah. When he was talking to the doctor, the female doctor, and she's like, what we're doing here, we're going to like change the future. And she would be like, it's a shame if 
we went out of business. Like, what what would you do for work? Like threatening him. Like you could find something. You could do anything. I know. Like the McDonald's. Well, <laughs> well, here's the here's the thing too. There's a lot of scandals going on within like the first opening scenes. Like they're breaking genetic laws. Apparently, you yeah. Know very, very corrupt uh, organization. And then they're yeah. like, "You brought in these sharks ahead of schedule. Like we're not ready with the fences yet." Like you hear that line yeah. somewhere dropped in there. Like you're right, Eric. They they're like, "We broke the Harvard code," and everyone's just like, "Yeah." What? It's like there's a lot of scandalous stuff going on it's like you're a criminal right it's like okay like how many scandals can we lay on in the first 10 minutes yeah like, i love to right when samuel jackson gets off the boat and he's just like treat me like a tourist it's like all right sweet so now the audience is like we can fill you in on everything audience <laughs> like they do a good job introducing all the characters i i thought they did like really quickly yeah guys can do. we talk about the biggest thing about this movie Michael Rappaport. Michael Rappaport. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, dude, they hired him and they were like, listen, we want you to say a bunch of cheesy lines. Like the very first thing he said was when the shark was there. He's like, did somebody order the fish? I'm like, who would say that? Who oh, yeah. That? Yeah. So Michael Rappaport, he's a high school dropout playing a smart tech guy. That's hilarious. Yeah, he went to Caltech for physics. <laughs> he was like the science guy. Yeah, um, not in real life. Yeah, and he was like he he had all like the nerdy answers when uh the I'm just, I'm still gonna refer to him as the Punisher when he was like how many pounds of pressure can this place take he's like only thirty six hundred and then it's gonna snap like toothpicks. <laughs> That's I know, probably yeah. the best line in the movie. Well, it feels almost like, like him and Carter are like friends too, like before all of this. I mean, they're they're like buddies, you know. Like it's a, a pretty nerdy place, and they're you know I'm sure he looks up to him because he's like the shark. Guy. <laughs> he gets hit pretty hard he's probably the most brutal one of the most brutal deaths like cut in half his foot's twitching uh, yeah <laughs> dave Port dave portnoy definitely has that on repeat at, <laughs> wherever he is like just like in the office on a tv it's just on loop when he gets eaten by the shark onwards like <laughs> you know you know what um the guy who had it the worst in this movie and you, you mentioned arm. his name. The guy who got, yo, that guy who got his, let's just, oh, okay. I thought I about, about this. Break it down. Let <laughs> me break it down because I, I, I wrote it down. Okay, so this guy, right? He got his arm bit off, which that alone would be awful. Then yeah. they're like, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to, we're going to helicopter you out of here. He's dangling over this storm in the ocean. It's like a hurricane. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's dangling. And then he gets dropped then into the, the cable water. snaps or whatever. And then, like, and then when it can't get any worse, he's in the mouth of a shark and it it swims full speed and slams him into the glass. <laughs> like he's not even getting eaten by a shark. He's probably getting bit and getting teeth in him. But like he's not getting chewed. And he just boom, like full speed. What a terrible way to go. Terrible but, 10 minutes of life. But here's the thing. That glass has got to be so thick. And these the shark throws him. Listen, I'm not saying anything, but the second that shark lets go, that thing is going to fall. It's not. It doesn't have inertia. You know, it's not space. It's just literally all the, and it's just going to drop. So I'm like, this is just ridiculous. Well, I'll tell you what, what would have happened. Like, the second he slammed into the the glass and it cracked like it cracked like a centimeter. If yeah. I was there, I'd have been like, I am fucking gone. They watched yeah. it like spider crack up and they were like, We need to get back, people. <laughs> like, you need to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dude. typically that glass is made not to do the shatter. It's like made to like get a hole in it, but it can't shatter. Yeah. But like But the shark is swimming you know, is so fast that the pressure I don't know, man. You know, I don't know. Blame Michael Rappaport. Apparently he knows about that thing he definitely got bad glass so it's his fault <laughs> but like i, I just want to kind of like think about these sharks so they are enhanced because they grew their brain size but here's the thing just because they're smarter sharks they treat them in the movie like they understand the concept of everything humans understand everything that's going on they know what the audience knows these sharks should only just be <laughs> better hunters they they look at they're taking out the security footage the security cams like how the <laughs> fuck do they know what a security camera is just because their brains are bigger you know well obviously there's the the movie aspect to it but like i looked at it as this lady made them so intelligent that they have just become like even more of an alpha predator I totally agree with that. But the fact that it matters is like, okay, our brains are bigger. Now it's like we understand the concept of videography and where the surveillance <laughs> cameras are placed and also dramatic effect. It's like, I don't know. I just kind of look at it like, okay. like <laughs> understandable yeah, yeah i can totally yeah but it's like what is she teaching them how to read you know are they going to start understanding like world politics yeah at the end of the movie <laughs> it's like they can't find out they're getting tricked by the lady who cuts her hand 
Exactly. It's like exactly. we aren't that smart, but we know that these cameras are up everywhere. <laughs> but like seriously, like what if it escaped? Like let's just say it actually escaped. What's it gonna do? Like take over the ocean and be like the lead, the supreme leader? I think it's eight years for uh, them to give birth, or ha- uh, they have to be eight years old before they can give birth. I think Mako. It's not that I watch a lot of Shark Week, but um, <laughs> yeah. But regardless, this is apparently the smartest thing that's ever lived. It's like you just dropped us to the bottom of the food chain. It's just like, really? Okay. It's one know. shark. It probably has a tracker in it. That's how we find out <laughs> the other boat. So we can definitely find it and kill it. Well, here's the other thing. It's so smart that it also knows when Samuel Jackson's talking. It must be under the water listening to him and then jumps out and grabs him right as he's about to tell his plan and then brings him down. It's insane. And I love it. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. I mean, that that's probably one of the most iconic parts of this movie. But yeah. I always liked when his arm gets ripped off because... You're in like they're in this high, like, oh my god, they just cured dementia. And like you're like, oh my, like this is amazing. And then boom, really quick just turns. Yeah. I mean, it's this the whole movie was just like the perfect storm of bad events. Like <laughs> they're in the middle of the ocean on this little like sea base. And like the one weekend, the one 48 hour period where she makes these sharks super smart happens to be like the worst storm ever to where yeah. help can't come. And they're just stuck. Like the top of the base is on fire. They're on the, the brink of being flooding. defunded. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Dude, so like they're fun. climbing up the ladder. The ladder's bending. They're trying to run across the door. It's screws are shooting out. I'm like, you guys are just, <laughs> this is not a good weekend. <laughs> yeah. For it's sure. uh it's I do like how they justify what the station is, though. I, I really like paid attention this time uh, where they're just like, yeah, it's an old World War Two base that they built from the military and we bought it from them. And I'm like, huh? OK, but I want to ask you guys too. the first scene where they're like reprimanding this this doctor. Who the hell is that like white guy sitting at the desk? I, I took it as some like corporate high up person. But speaking of that, like it's so funny because. Clearly, they haven't been successful in their trials. And she was just like, all I need is 48 hours. And I'm like, like, realistically, like, what would change in two days? Research takes a while. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, apparently all they had to do was just suck some goo out of that thing's brain. Also, does that fuck that <laughs> shark up? Because that shark's the lead bad guy for the rest of the movie. So, like, is he kind of like, ah, oh, my fucking brain? Like, <laughs> I mean, they sucked out, like, all this goo out of his head. <laughs> all right, Eric, Eric, wait. As as a shark king, as a shark, uh, not king, as a shark, shark king. as a as a knowledge of sharks. Yes. Um, remember when when uh, Thomas Jane has the shark like pinned down or or whatever, and they're they're you know sucking the shit out of its brain. He's petting Bad it, dreams. right? He's petting the shark. His hand is going against its fins. Shouldn't his hand be getting all fucked up? I mean, I'm sure he has a lot of callus from dealing with sharks in the past. But yeah, the the shark skin is like a sandpaper. Yeah. So he should it should be like sandpaper more than anything. Huh. Yeah, He's going slow wrong. at least. If they, if they were to brush by you and they show that in jaws where the shark goes by the kid and yeah. you can get like seriously burned by a shark cuz yeah, their no. skin is so sandpapery. Well, I did think it was interesting like in in the beginning when he was swimming with the tiger shark like and I'm sure Eric being a doctor of sharkology what? knows this. <laughs> The tiger shark and bull shark are like the two known sharks for like aggression. They will they'll kill you just because they want to kill you. And he's just like he put his hand in its mouth and I'm like, nah, dude, this is not real. Yeah, I I don't I don't know if this is true, but I think the bull shark has the most like true killing test of has the highest testosterone. Well, because they're they're they go like they go in shallow water and they also go in rivers too, I think, and they can like bite your ankle off and when that happens you bleed out and that's like i think the bull shark has the most deaths out of any other shark but makos mm-hmm. makos are around here um they're around connecticut billy our, our friend who's been a guest on the podcast does mako fishing oh yeah he's actually won a couple tournaments doing mako shark fishing they're very yeah. fast fish well eric being the um the king of shark information uh, i have another question for you so okay. you know when thomas jane brings the shark in to get its brain sucked out or whatever what was the plan there? Okay, because well, they're he, like... He, sorry, no, no, here's my favorite thing. So he just, in, in open water, he yeah. tranquilizes the shark, right? Yeah. How the hell does he get it on the lift? I know! That's what I was like, <laughs> but that's what we're like, what's the plan here? What was the plan? Yo, when that happened, like, it's you so You just like, grab funny. it by, like, by the fin and like swim it up to the lift? Like, no. Yeah. It's so funny you mentioned that, dude, because I, I literally <laughs> thought the same thing. Like, the shark was on the lift. One of two things happened here. It either was like falling asleep and like gracefully floated onto the lift or like a cable or something. Like what, like what happens to a shark that would it sink? Would it just like float? I, 
he somehow like pulled this eight thousand pound shark onto the lift perfectly. But yeah. like, was that the plan from the get go? It's like, all right, so you're gonna swim down there. You're you're gonna lose your um flashlight or whatever. You're now gonna lose communication with us. You're gonna go out of the cage, trank it in open water, and then put it onto the lift. That's it insane. wasn't the plan because remember they lost communication with him and they were freaking out like wait or, like please people are getting scared like where are you and like he hit his yeah. scuba gear in the cage to trick the shark. That's a classic Michael Rappaport line. He's like you're screwing around, Cardi. You're scaring people. It's just where's her? Uh, where's her? <laughs> oh, oh, I love God, the yeah. the other best line is like you can trust me. You can trust me. You know why? Because I'm trustworthy. Like oh god. Yeah. <laughs> like it's just like you got big balls. You got big brass balls. Just like, all right. Man. You know what I, I did uh, find funny? When the doctor electrocuted the shark, first of all, like that shark was in midair, like lunging at her. And she just like put the, the wire in its mouth and it somehow like stopped it, like broke the laws of physics. Well, it just stopped. If she doesn't know how to turn that electricity off, she's not getting off that bookshelf or oh, whatever. Guys, well, she, yeah, she stood on the rubber suit, which is why, because at first I was like, why is she like half naked? <sighs> And she stood on her suit. She's like, the only way I can kill this shark is if my boobs are out. Yeah. No, but then, <laughs> but then I noticed. <laughs> she shocks the shark and there's a live wire in the water still. And she's right. like, well, I can't leave unless I have the power to turn it off. Yeah. That's yeah. True. The other is, thing, the same thing when LL Cool J is in the oven or whatever and he gets out of there. He's how is when he lights the, the flame, you're going to tell me the gas hasn't already spread to the entire room if it's able to blow up the whole room. <laughs> <laughs> it should have blown up the second he lights it. He's just like, you killed my bird. And then throws it. It should have been like, the second he sparked that. <laughs> and then, Here's the, his, it, so keep going. Keep going. No, and then he's able to like perfectly get love, out as oh it's God. exploding the door open like the end of Star Wars. It's like insane. No, there's two other things I want to mention right now. One is his line at the end of the movie when he blows the shark up. Yeah. And he sees Carter still alive. He's like, bring me back some sushi. It's like, yeah. hey, this isn't a laughing matter. <laughs> everyone's dead it's like people died dead. LL. also ll people you're died. likely still gonna die like just because oh, yeah. you shot him like you're bleeding out hard and what do you think these people on the boat they're probably drunk <laughs> dude at the Wait. end when he's like here comes the next ship and they're all waving those guys are probably like what the fuck happened dude we leave for 48 hours <laughs> other thing i want to say is like when carter gets like the harpoon through the thigh or whatever oh he's my like god to the shark yeah. well, well first of all he's riding that shark like free willy Right. <laughs> and it's like, hold me. Let the be of the journey now. So I can see him standing. You know, Mako's go 80 miles an hour. Like, he's not holding on. He's riding it so gracefully, dude. But realistically, if you were hold, if you were somehow able to hold on, no, the force, no. the force of the water hitting your face, you would be like, <laughs> all right. That is actually my favorite part of the movie is when he shoots and it just goes through the fin and it hits. It's like, like <laughs> you're just like, this is that's probably the best shot in the entire movie. <laughs> well, also, no, LL, LL Cool J's reaction is like, oh man, it's like, damn like, it, man. Dude, that would be so painful. <laughs> and how does he get it out? So so basically the shark's just like, okay, you're coming with me. He's then able to rip it out of his thigh. No, he's thin. not. He he holds onto the fence and the shark keeps going and rips no. the thing out. Like that's the only okay, way to dude, do it. That would rip your first off, that would rip your thigh yeah. just in half. Uh, your you your you would main bleed arteries are right there. You're bleeding <laughs> yeah. out. Like he's yeah. so dead. Dude. Yeah, and he gives the most casual it's like Carter, and he's just like, hey. Like sort of thing. It's just like, come on, come on. <laughs> but it does. I will say this movie. It it blurs the line where you're like, okay, this is so unlikely, but not yeah. impossible. Where like Sharknado and Megalodon, that stuff. It's so. It's just completely outlandish. This is like the chances of this happening is <laughs> one, one percent, <laughs> not even. But it all works out. I don't know. It's the best way that I can sum it up is like it's an entertaining movie. Like if you're scrolling through the channels and you see Deep Blue Sea on, like you'll probably stop and watch it. You know? I mean, yeah. well, I want to ask yeah, you guys. Yeah, I mean, if I saw LL Cool J walking down the street, I'd be like, "Yo, LL, bring me back some sushi." <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, "That movie came out like 25 years hey, ago, man." I was gonna say, "Hey, can uh, also the music in it's great. Can one of you call me right now? Can, what? Can one of call you call you? me?" Yeah, call okay, me. I, I'm going to call you, and I'm hoping your ringtone is something Deep Blue Sea-ish. No, just call me. Just call me. Right, hopefully, right. hopefully my ringtone's it's, up. It's dialing. Okay. <laughs> Eric. Right, Hello? Eric. Hello? You, you, 
I hug up, but you you purchased that, correct? You spent like at least no, a no. I just bring it to my library. I mean, maybe in '99 <laughs> I bought it. I don't know. Oh my god, it. I, but I dude, like Lewis is awesome. Me and LL, we go back. We go back. We uh, we were like nine when this came out. So, did I buy the soundtrack on CD? Are you asking that? I I think I know the answer. <laughs> but, but yeah, like the first time we saw this when we were nine, we would definitely finish the movie and we were like, "Wow, that was really cool. The sharks are badass." And I did notice they they did the typical '90s thing where at the end. The Punisher was like, yeah, they just want to go out into the deep blue sea. And I was like, ah, he said it. He said it. Oh, yeah. If he just turned and looked at the camera, then everybody would be like, (laughs) dude, for some reason, they filmed it perfectly. That scene where what is it? Thomas Jane. That's his name, right? Yeah. He's he's upside down on the ladder and he's trying to like grab that blonde hair chick to bring her up. And she's like she's missing it by like inches. Right. Like she just can't get it. And the, the timing of how you see her body come out, like you think for a split second, like, oh, wow, she like propelled herself out of the water, but half her body's in the shark's mouth. <laughs> yeah, that shark also just like fucking with her. So kind of like, well, why don't we uh, let them think they have a chance before I rip Terrifying, you dude. Terrifying. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Mike, I, uh, I IMDB'd Michael Rappaport because like for some reason everyone knows him. Yeah. But I don't know what he's in. And like, I couldn't see anything of like significance. It's a random shows. And I know you mentioned he's a stand up uh, comedian. Yeah. But I think this is like the only actual movie I've seen him in. Huh. He's in Friends. Um, I think that's probably where he got his early fame in Friends. He was. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> he had that show. It was called The War at Home. And that was on like after Family Guy when we were like 16. I remember that show. It was, it was OK. It was like a multi okay. I do remember he, that. He's an NBA guy, too. He talks a lot about NBA and his Twitter and whatnot. Um, and he had his own podcast with Barstool. Obviously, the viral stool thing went down. Not going to get into <laughs> that. But yeah, he kind of now he's just buried. I feel like I haven't heard anything about him in two years. So. The biggest actor in this movie is probably Samuel Jackson. Even then, I'd imagine. Yeah, him, him, and and Thomas Jane, and like I, I told you guys, they made a Deep Blue Sea two and three. Yeah, never. I did not know it. I'm kind of curious, like what it's about. Dude, Deep Blue Sea three came out like last year. Like it's new. Oof, really? Um, During COVID, it came out. Ugh. Well, yeah, it's straight to DVD, but Deep Blue Sea 2 has a zero percent Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm like, all right, Oof. I'm like, I kind of <laughs> have to see this. Yeah, I'm looking at the IMDb's uh, now, and I don't recognize one person in two. <laughs> and um, three. They bring back Michael Rackaport. <laughs> yeah, he somehow lived. No, the only person I recognize is this woman. Oh, she's on Lost. Okay. That's how I recognize her. That, but other than that, dude, like, I don't know who these people are. I just, like, we don't need this movie. Actually, you know what? I kind of, the only reason I'd watch a second one <laughs> is if Thomas Jane and LL Cool J are in it. That's the only reason I'd watch it. I mean, that would be cool. They definitely did not have the budget to do that. Though. No, no, of course not. LL Cool J was like, I'm not doing that shit again. <laughs> do you have a sequel idea, Alec, if you were to make a sequel? I don't, but I kind of just want to ask this question really quick, and then I want to see if you have a sequel idea, Eric. But this movie came out, the second one came out in 2018. All right, so that's like 20 fucking years after Deep Blue Sea 1. Why would they wait that long to make a sequel with none of the returning cast? Just call it a different movie. Don't even call it Deep Blue Sea 2. It's like, is there enough of a property value and just calling it that for it to go straight to DVD 20 years after the initial one came out? Who's the fan base, you know? I mean, the second one sounds identical to the first one. A brilliant billionaire creates five genetically altered bull sharks, which proceed to wreak havoc for a group of scientists on an isolated research facility. Like, they didn't even change. The, they're like, give us a script. We'll just, like, do it again. <laughs> Yeah. What about you, Eric? Do you have any sequel ideas? Not really. I mean, I would I would say it would have to start with like a lawsuit and just that this company <laughs> that obviously put a lot of money into this is going bankrupt and they're on the last ditch effort to get money back. And all of a sudden there's a discovery of an ancient thought to be extinct shark they found that has a brain even more <laughs> evolved than a Mako. And they're like, this is the last ditch we can try to research obviously this shark is very large like not megalodon size but a very big kind of extinct shark and same rinse and repeat but more issues more issues though where it's like it's more like we don't have the money so instead of fences in the water we have nets like (laughs) i mean you could these these kinds of movies like this you can make dozens of them because there's there's no like plot to it but i think a funny sequel would be that whoever that like 
white corporate guy was who was sitting in the chair who you yeah. mentioned alec yeah like the second one opens up where he's on the phone he's like he's like okay okay like clearly we need an expert for this and they call back thomas jane and he's like i swore i'd never swim again and this is years later and the guy's like look the doctor finished her research we have the cure for alzheimer's he's like there's only one problem and then thomas jane lights up a cigarette and he's like well there's no smoking here and he just continues to light it up and he's like it's at the bottom of the deep blue sea and it's like somehow like not destroyed by water and he's just like on one condition and you just see like ll cool j it just cuts to ll cool j <laughs> he's like that's his condition oh, or even better you okay could, you could do a scene where he says we need someone to like oversee like what happened at the other place like, well card died in a diving accident off of the coast costa rica coast like two months ago it's like well who else was there and it's just ll cool j it's like <laughs> Yeah, he just like shows up like no one else was there. Uh, well, there was one person. It's just the chef, L. O. Cool J. He's like, have you ever seen one of these makos up close, man? He's got another <laughs> parrot. But just to combine both of your ideas, imagine Eric. Yeah, exactly. They bring back Thomas Jane. They bring back L. O. Cool J. And they're like, there's a megalodon at the bottom of the ocean. It's like we send you down there. It's like it cured Alzheimer's, but this one, it'll cure cancer and diabetes. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like, oh my or, god. We have to. Or they this. can do a hybrid movie between the Meg and Deep Blue Sea. You know, Thomas Jane is like, he's like, I won't do it. And he's like, yeah, but don't worry. He's like, we got another expert. And Jason Statham comes in. He's like, hello. Oh my God. That's <laughs> yeah, just Deep Blue Meg. Dude, yeah. that would be Deep Blue Meg. Like, it would be pretty cool. Jason Statham and the Punisher. And all of a sudden there's a tornado that comes in. It's like, what's going on? It's like Megalodon NATO. Or we're just going, we're going off the rails this podcast. Because last time it was like a, a hurricane. Tom Machine is like, don't worry, I've dealt with sharks. <laughs> a tornado and a hurricane, Jason Statham's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be so absurd. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> I'd still see at it. At this point, just make all the properties combined, like with Anaconda and Lake Placid. Just make those movies, you know, because these are so ridiculous anyways. Stop trying to have them. Or, or you could Kobe's do, the, there's block. actually one other survivor. It's like, who? It's like <laughs> this guy walks in with like a prosthetic arm. Like, I made it. It's like, how the hell did <laughs> yeah. you make it out? Like... I mean, he had an oxygen right. tank. No, no, no. Which somehow, somehow the water didn't seep no. in, and he did survive. They show it. But him. they show him dying. I don't remember. I just yeah, remember getting it in the glass. And then... No, they do. They do. I don't. They show. They show his body. He's drowned. I think Thomas Jane finds his body underwater, and he's just like you know, completely drowned. Eyes are open. Mask is off. So he's dead. Oh, okay. Oh, well. I well, you guys got any last things to say about Deep Blue Sea? Good. Good movie realistically i probably will not voluntarily choose to watch it again only because i've seen it so many times but a good movie yeah entertaining 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 and i, I kind of want to try one of little cool j's omelets they sound really good um how many kianos would you give Deep i'd Blue give Sea? it a solid 3.1 and that's that's generous <laughs> in my mind it's very generous <laughs> alec yeah three and that is beyond generous yeah i, I would say three as well yeah, so it's just it's, like, what, what, what's that? What, what do we have it on? It's not most heinous. It's not heinous. It's somewhat excellent. I forget <laughs> what I have it as. Let me pull it <laughs> Almost oh. excellent. It's a almost excellent. It's so it's so maybe more like a 2.9, honestly, for like a heinous towards almost excellent. All right. What do you say? You ready to spin that wheel? I'm ready to spin that wheel. Let's do it. All right. I'm pulling it up. Sorry, I was just playing some Hello Cool Jay. All right. <laughs> spinning. Sleepaway Camp. Oh, nice. I have no idea what this movie's about, so. <laughs> Get ready, dude. Uh, we actually, we have Kelly Harvell as a guest for that episode. Excellent. That's a freaky one. It's uh... it's freaky? <laughs> You're probably going to like it. it you, you'll see. You'll... How, how old is it? 83, I think. Oh, shit, okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Have you seen that movie, Justin? No. Oh, it's it's out there. Justin, thank you for being on this episode of Wheel of Horror, and we'll see you this Friday with Fresh Film Fridays 2. Ooh. Yeah. Don't forget to listen. Uh, Eric, if you would like to join. What films are you guys doing? Fear Street Part okay. 2, False Positive, which all three are horror movies just out wow. of coincidence, and then a classic horror story, which is on Netflix. And one of the two is an A24 film. I don't remember which one. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna try to watch Fear Street. Maybe I'll join you on uh, Part 2. So. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening in. Thank you, Justin, and we will see everybody next week with Sleepaway Camp.